Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ari in the Air. Welcome back to the channel. Stoked you're here. Today, got a big question. How much speed bar? When we learned to paraglide, our instructors told us that we needed to know how to use a speed bar, so we basically learned to push it out with our feet. But the question of how much speed bar and when to use it and why we use that much speed bar is kind of a dark art. I have flown a ton of cross country and I've wondered the same exact thing. But the reason that no one told you this is not because they were trying to keep something from you, but it's actually a very nuanced thing. So in this episode, I wanna teach you, I wanna help answer this question of how much speed bar. I'm gonna do it in three levels. I'm gonna give you a basic rule of thumb. I'm gonna give you the next layer of complexity and the final layer of complexity to bring it into a nuanced idea of how fast you should be going. This is a concept that we talk about as speed to fly. So today, I'm gonna to answer this question for you. How much speed bar? Ready? Here we go. See ya. Okay, so if you're watching and you like this channel, I love making these videos, I love sharing my knowledge. If you get something out of this, I would so appreciate you considering becoming a patron on Patreon, that's patreon.com slash in the air, the link is in the description below. That can be as little as $5 a month, just buy me a beer, we can cheers after our monthly hypothetical internet paragliding flight. Thank you so much, really appreciate everyone who's doing that. So, how much speed bar? How much freaking speed bar? This is a concept that we talk about as speed to fly. How fast I should be going. This is nested in a context of cross country flying, essentially. Glide maximization, how fast and how far we can fly. So, also I wanna note that basically that this, these rules apply to every glider. They don't really change because of your glider. Someone asked me recently if on their low end E and B that if they should be using speed bar or not. And yes, the answer is yes, of course. Every glider, this basically is the same for all gliders, okay? So the first concept, and this is the most basic, most primitive, the most important speed to fly is a relationship between how fast you should be flying your glider, which the spectrum of speed is from using lots of brakes and turning circles like your thermaline, and on the other end of the spectrum, as fast as the glider will go is full speed bar. So that's one spectrum, and that is in relationship to your vertical airspeed, which is your lift or your sink, right? So I'm gonna draw this relationship for you so that you can always have this graph in your head. You can be flying and think, okay, I'm going down at two meters a second. How, where does that put me on Aerie in the Air's graph? Okay, here we go, ready? So on the Y axis, we are going to have speed. And remember, this is full bar. And this at the bottom is turning circles. On this axis, is gonna be our vertical airspeed, also known as sink and lift. So this is, let's say, negative four meters per second, negative four meters per second, and plus four, plus four meters per second. Okay, it basically looks like this. Pretty simple, right? But what does this mean? If we're in negative four meters a second, we're at full speed bar, no question. If we're at plus four meters per second, we're turning circles, no question, right? So this is your basic rule of thumb on speed to fly. And there are some slight exceptions that we're gonna start talking about, but 
This is the foundational piece of speed to fly that basically trumps all the other ones. We're gonna add wind and we're gonna add like the kind of day that we're flying. But in general, if I'm in negative four meters per second sink, I'm pushing full speed bar no matter what. And honestly, if I'm in negative three meters per second, three and a half, I'm probably pushing full speed as well, just because that's kind of how I fly. But as a general rule of thumb, if you see negative four meters per second on your Vario, also just to note, when I'm talking about this, we're talking about gliding, we're talking about climbing, it's helpful to have an averager on your Vario. So if your instrument is showing you instant, like how fast you're going up in any one second, then your brain is gonna have to take those numbers and kind of average it out. So it's best to, on your climbing screen, have a 15 second average, okay? And on your gliding screen, at least a five second average, okay? Those are just the things that I use that really helps me kind of, that helps my brain relax. So my brain doesn't have to look at all the numbers changing so rapidly and then try to average them out to understand how much I'm sinking or climbing. The computer can do that, a lot of that for you, okay? So if you're in climb, turn circles. If you're in a bunch of sync, push full speed. Doesn't matter the glider, doesn't matter the day, <laughs> doesn't really matter how much wind you're in. That's just how it goes. Okay, wait, there's a part I left out here. The part I left out is how, like the actual use of the damn thing. So on my competition glider, I have a three step speed bar. The first does about half, maybe it's 40%. The second does about 80%, and the third takes the pulleys over the pulley 100% speed. Okay, so when you look at the graph of like the relationship of how fast you should fly versus how much lift you're in, it's like there's pretty much only three settings I have for my glider. It's like 40% speed, 80% speed, or 100% speed. I don't really try to feather it between those, okay? And I just let it be what it's gonna be. It's really a pretty simple machine, this paraglider thing, and it's not super, super fine tuned between the steps of the speed bar. So in your speed bar, you basically, if you have a two step, you just, the first step and the second step, that's all you have. Those are your two choices. So just dumb it down to your two choices. You don't need to think about going between the steps of the speed bar. I hope that's simplifying, okay? Okay, that's the most primitive speed to fly is relative to your vertical airspeed. And that's the most important relationship in speed to fly is your speed to your vertical airspeed, okay? We, everyone knows the adage, you fly slow in lift and fast in sync. We turn circles in lift and we go gliding quickly through sync, okay? It's basically all that graph says. I'm gonna add the next layer of complexity into this and that is wind so speed to fly with wind um, there's not an easy that's there's not nearly as easy of a graph as for this one but i'm going to say a couple things about speed to fly with wind so to maximize your glide over the ground into headwind these are some some things you're going to have to think about if you're going into a headwind to maximize your glide, you're gonna push enough speed bar that your ground speed approaches your trim speed, right? So let's say we're flying along. The trim speed on our glider is 35 kilometers an hour because you fly a race glider. Trim speed 35, but I'm only doing 25. So that means I've got a 10 kilometer an hour headwind to maximize my glide over the ground, I'm gonna push enough speed bar so that my ground speed gets up to 35 kilometers an hour, okay? That's a pretty simple rule. That's for headwind, and that's almost the easier of the calculations to make while you're flying. But what if you're in tailwind? So if you're in a strong tailwind, you're not gonna fly as fast your ground speed is gonna be higher, and since the wind is pushing you, you actually wanna lower your airspeed in your glider. So that means that 
If I'm at negative three meters a second, but I've got a 20 kilometer an hour tailwind, I'm actually not gonna push as much speed bar because the wind is carrying me so much that I want to keep my sink rate low. For example, this is an easy example. Think if you're soaring. If you're soaring and you push out and you're in light lift, light lift, light lift, but strong headwind, you're not making a ton of ground speed, you push out, you push out, you push out, and then you turn around and you wanna fly back to the hill. What speed do you fly your glider to arrive at the hill the highest that's possible? What is it? The answer is minimum sink. If you've just flown through smooth, buoyant, or lifting air, and you're gonna go downwind back to the hill, you want to let the wind do the flying for you Keep your glider at minimum sink and just let the wind carry you towards the hill. When you fly at minimum sink, imagine your glider usually goes down 1.5 meters per second, you pull the brakes a bit, now you're at one meter a second is typical minimum sink. So since you're at minimum sink, you're slowing your airspeed down, but you're slowing your sink rate down, so the wind is just gonna carry you, you're gonna arrive later, but higher on the hill, okay? so. The relationship between your wind and how much bar to push is essentially in headwind, push as much bar as you need to get back to trim speed. That is best glide, okay? And downwind, you are going to, maybe I can draw a graph of this. It's like, <laughs> Just the perfect 45s on all the graphs. <laughs> Just to show that it's like a kind of a general relationship and may have some exceptions and also is this graph layered on that one, layered on the next one. So if it's blowing you really fast, then go slow. And if you don't have any tailwind, then use the bar to glide, okay? It's kind of the general rule there, okay? And I know that's the second layer of complexity. The third layer of complexity is the day. So, let's talk about this. Imagine we have two climbs. Okay, two climbs come from the ground, they're in the same wind, they're drifting the same. You get to the top of the climb and you push full speed. And you go because you're going really fast, you don't have a great glide. And you arrive here in three minutes. Your buddy goes trim speed and goes, dee, 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 dee. he's getting a better glide than you, but he's slow. He's slow. Okay. Now he arrives, but this took him five minutes. The question of how your speed to fly is affected by the day is How many meters per second? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. How many meters per second do these climbs have to be for it to make sense for you to go full speed between the climbs all day long? The answer is four. It's four. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. It's four. It's four. Said that. Okay, so if the climb is four meters a second, 
And it actually might even be a little bit less than this. I can't remember. Maybe I can pull up the graph and link it, but probably not. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> if the climb is four meters a second, then you racing on full speed bar, you'll get here, but then you'll climb. And by the time your buddy arrives, he'll have arrived higher than you, but you will already have out climbed him. Okay. Does that make sense? So if your climb is only two meters a second for the day, then you want to fly speed to fly like the first graph. If you're sinking, then you go fast. And if you're in buoyant air, you go slower. If it's four meters a second here and four meters a second here, go full speed, get from climb to climb to climb. Typically, this only happens in the middle of the day. Can we do this? Because think of our day as like this. This is like zero meters per second in the morning. This is 8 a.m. and this is 8 p.m. In the middle of the day, we're gonna have fours, four meters per second. There it is. So from 1.30 to 4.30, these are general. This is full speed between the climbs. If, if the climbs are four meters a second. Okay, so I hope that explains how much speed bar. We covered basic speed to fly, your speed versus your, or your speed in relationship to your vertical airspeed. We talked about how much bar into headwind to give you maximum glide. We talked about how fast you should fly downwind to maximize the force of the wind so that you don't just sink out of it. And we also talked about how fast you should be flying in the different parts of the day or depending on how strong the day is, okay? Hope that's helpful. Please, if you got something out of this video, consider liking it, subscribing it, sharing with your friends, having a conversation, making a comment, and most of all, become a patron on Patreon, patreon.com slash airy in the air. I so appreciate that, that helps so much. I love making these videos and I hope you're getting something out of them as well. Top tier patrons are gonna get a sick area in the air buff. And I'm also starting to offer paraglide coaching. If you would like to talk on a video chat with me about what you're working on in paragliding and how I can help guide you, please send me an email. That's area in the air at gmail.com. Until next time, folks, fly safe and speed to fly. How much speed bar? It's a good question. See you later.